Okay, so for this video, I wanted to talk a little about the WMD SSF MMF, that is multi-mode filter. It's now been discontinued, like uh, the whole WMD SSF line. I'm always raving about the DBLR delay as well, which is great. But the MMF is a really, really great filter as well. And um, if you watch the previous video about this small system, um, I usually have a verbose dual for pull, filling this big gap here. And uh, I really wanted to put this little tiny add to module because this helps me control the red panel much better. But then I don't have space for the dual full pull because it's 21 odd HP. So the only other filter I have with me here is the WM the MMF. So it's a good filter. Might as well use it. And it's fun to swap modules in and out for inspiration. So what we have here is sort of a simple, very simple two-step sequence for from the red panel with function going into the MMF opening LXD. I was saying this module helps me control this better because it helps me reclaim some space on my duet. I can mix voltage in there and add them very precisely so I can use one attenuator to move both of these oscillator into audible range so that's I, I can go much further than what i usually do with the alm pamela's new workout just with a, a static five voltage gate which isn't enough to put the modulation oscillator high enough so yeah very useful little module especially to mix gates and whatever voltage you have. Uh, frankly, everyone should get one of these uh, adder. It's really useful. So I'm using the negative out from function into the FM. That's, so that's why the FM is fully 
positive because I'm sending it a negative envelope because I'm using the positive envelope for LXD. And I'm using the mods here for something else. So that's why I'm using both outputs. Doesn't matter because the FM input is bipolar. So that's, that's the sound. That's the sequence, which isn't great. But it sounds cool when you're forcing the, the filter to be closed by the envelope. The resonance is pretty high, as you can see. And so what I wanted to show, oh, it's on low pass, uh, low pass mode, by the way. What I wanted to show was how you can use every input, the FM input with the envelope, the ping input with a gate, and the volt per octave input as well. The ping input, this cable, is going to go into the ping input. And I'm going through the LXD, I'm using it as a VCA, because I'm sending it this gate from the steppy. So I want to ping the filter, but I don't want the ping to be always the same strength. So that's why I'm going into the LXD first and I'm sending a random from Pamela's new workout to open make noise. So every time this gate will happen, it will always be at a different level. Let's hear it. So that's a low level. That's a higher level. I've put some probabilities on there just to have things happen more occasionally. Of course, this is going straight into my interface and it's followed by a ton of plugin, which I'll show you afterwards. So I really like these bursts of ping. It's just a gate. It's really useful to have a ping input on a filter. It mimics an LPG pretty much. And so, since I've been able to reclaim one half of my duet, I'm copying the CV sequence from Tirana. So it's going to the oscillator, but it's also going into my second attenuator. And I'm sending that into the volt per octave input. So I can have this variation as well, slowly opening the filter. So there's the envelope, the ping, and the volt per octave all fighting a bit against each other. And now you have all the elements together. Just a tiny attenuator allows you to control the tension of the sounds. Once again, it's not much, it's just one synth sequence, hats and kicks. So let's see what's happening on the screen now. So the module is going in mono into my interface, just with an adapter cable. So if you remember, this is a sound. And if you can see on the screen, I have two tracks for my Digitect and two tracks for my modular. But it's exactly the same thing. 
then I'm using a plugin and I mostly talk about that. I'm using this plugin by Clef Grant, which is called Gaffo. And I'm gonna put it on screen. Basically, it's an EQ where you put it on each track that you want it active. And so you can choose which bands are active for that track. So basically it allows me to separate my modular sound into two tracks with one containing A and B, which is the low frequencies, and the other one has the higher frequencies. The cool thing with this plugin is that if you move the area of one letter, C, it's going to move it for every track the plugin is on. So you can really make adjustments on one track and it's going to be the same here. If I move B here, then on the other track, you can hear the sound of change and the other track is completely changed. The whole reason why I've used that plugin is because I wanted on the higher frequency to have much more effects. So the one I have on both channels are a Valhalla delay, a phaser by T16, God phaser. I think this is like the init preset which I tweaked a little. A reverb by D16 as well which uh, is cool. I like that reverb and this, the phaser is great as well. And then this plugin could gaffle to separate my stuff. So then on the higher notes, I've put in the erosion plugin by uh, Ableton, which is nice to change the sound and give it an edge. Also, I'm using the moving three, five, six filter delay. I love the filter delay, especially on short sounds like this. That was mainly why I wanted to separate the sounds. I already have a delay, but I wanted the filter delay on those pings, but not on the bass. I'm using compressor just to catch the peaks of the pings because they can be really loud. So yeah, the compressor is useful to reduce the amplitude of the pings. And when I open my sound with the attenuator, all these effects are active as well, which can have a cool drastic effect. And so I've done the same with my Digitact. I've separated the kicks, well here they're just the kicks active, there's actually a 4-4 kick, which is a sample from my alpha bass. And there's a kick I've recorded with my modular. That's a bit more dry and shorter. So I like the interaction of the two. I've also used on the bass part of my palette modular sound, this plugin called Track Spacer, which I love. and almost always use that with to sort of sidechain the bass or anything that has low frequency in it with my kick. It's like all-in-one solution. It has the cued sidechain. You can choose the wet-dry amount. There's a high pass filter to choose when it starts to be active or low pass filter. Just a small amount makes a ton of difference. I really recommend this plugin. It's super simple, but uh, super useful. There are a bit more controls here. You can put in mid-side, choose the attack release, sidechain. 
but yeah, I really recommend this plugin. It's called Track Spacer. I got it on sale. Usually, it's probably around 80 euros. This one is very useful too, especially like if like many people you record your jams into stereo like I did for a while before I had a big enough interface. This allows you to split the audio into four parts and you can EQ them differently and compress or even just put creative effects on every part of the spectrum. I found that to be really really useful. So back to Digitact. So as you can hear, even though there's just a kick here, there's a sort of texture. If I mute my modular, there's a sort of texture in the highs, which comes from the second part here of my Digitact. I've put much more effects. I'm, I've cut all the highs with uh, the EQ, no, all the lows, sorry. Uh, still have the gaffo which is used just for CND here and I've used two plugins by Eventide which I got uh, at one point for I think when they discontinued the lower models of the H9 they gave all the Eventide plugins for free which was really generous so I got the Ultra Tap which is a H9 only uh, algorithm that's why I create this uh, texture otherwise that's just the dry sound and I have the rotary mod which is a sort of a hybrid phaser um, maybe Leslie speaker stuff stuff like that stuff to give movements it's part of the mode mod mod factor pedal which is cool because I don't have it Putting these effects on the higher parts, it gives me this texture even with the kick, but I put it on the hats first, because the hats are just super basic. Uh, these are the ones that I recorded from my modular as well. There's just some reverb from the Digitact. And yeah, I wanted some texture because they are so... so few sounds in here that I, I wanted to add a bit of texture and I find that uh, like s complex delays or stuff like that is usually nice it's fun to just scroll through your presets or take an hour or two and explore the pedals you have see what can work so yeah this is the Digitact Some of you may wonder why I'm not using Overbridge, which would split the tracks across all instruments. Well, basically because I haven't tried it yet, and uh, I wanted to show the Gaffel plugin. Of course, Overbridge is probably a thousand times more powerful, but it's also more complicated than. I like working that way, I'm used to it. I don't know, Overbridge seems unnecessarily complicated. That's uh, the extent of my uh, processing. Or well, I think I have a NiQ on the group for the Digitact. Elysia Music Master, very big artware piece, which I think I've tweaked it a little. And yeah, probably a compressor on the master. I have the Alpha compressor on the master, and another instance of the Music Muse EQ. The Elysia plugins are really, really good. And that's what prompted me to get the hardware versions. Not these, of course, because they are very expensive. But I got the 500 series. But yeah, if there's a sale, 
on the Plugin Alliance. I really get recommend the uh, the Music Q Impressor and uh, the Alpha Compressor is cool as well. Although it's a bit complicated, it takes a while to uh, understand basically, which I, I'm not sure I've, I've completely understand. So far I've been mostly using presets which I tweak a bit. There are a lot of knobs on that thing. That's usually the extent of the processing I do and if I'm sending stuff to be mastered later I of course don't put any compressor on the master. That would be a bit, bit of a dumb move, especially since I'm not exactly sure of what I'm doing. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.